Ugh. Damn it. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Oh my god. Ugh. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs>Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and we are not hopping into a Commodore 64 game today. Despite what that load screen may make it look like, we are hopping into the game called V V V V V V. It is. I don't know how you pronounce that, by the way. How are you supposed to pronounce that? You know, only on PC. This is actually a modern indie game designed intentionally to look like an old school Commodore 64 style game, which which I got to say I love. I mean, I mean, are you guys is anyone out there surprised by this that I love this so much? It's modern retro. It's a new game that's designed to look and play like an old game. Um so the thing with VVVVVVV is it's a platform where you can't jump. Uh, a platformer where you can't jump. So all you can do is toggle gravity. So you can reverse gravity. You can go up or down. Um, and that's the whole the whole crux of the game. And beyond that, it's a simple platformer with puzzle elements. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I'm excited here. I have not seen this intro. I know there is an intro, but I haven't seen it. Um, Uh-oh. Is everything okay? No, we've hit some kind of interference. Okay, I guess we're on some kind of spaceship. Oh, no. Something's wrong. We're going to crash. Evacuate. Run for your lives. This shouldn't be happening. Oh, God. We got sucked into some kind of portal. Or the warp drive went supernova. Phew, that was scary. At least we all escaped. R right, guys? G guys? Guys? Guys! Okay, we are uh, abandoned on a spaceship. And without further ado, welcome aboard. Um, so my guy... Oh, he looks so sad. All right, so uh, the game has awesome chip tunes. The graphics look like this is uh, playing on your grandpa's Commodore 64. And again, I love it. This this room is called Conundrum. So all the rooms have different names. This one is called Solitude. I wonder what the ship teleport or wonder why the ship teleported me here. Uh, I hope everyone else got out okay. So these are checkpoints, I believe. And if we go ahead and press spacebar, boom, gravity is reversed. I guess you guys saw that in the other room. Here are the bad guys, uh, animated stop signs. This is totally like something you would see in Commodore 64. I love that. Uh, well, this is interesting. hi <laughs> Oh, man, cool. So again, it's, a, it's an indie game, has only one real mechanic, and that is that you can reverse gravity. You cannot jump. You cannot do anything else. This is basically it. I don't know what the enemy was there. It was sort of like a uh, record, an evil record or something like that. Like, what, what could that be? Or, or a bouncy space tire, maybe? Um, oh, those platforms break. Okay, good to know. Uh, help, can anyone hear? Um, wait, wait, this is going too fast. Violet, is that you? Uh, Captain, you're okay. Yes, I am. Something has gone horribly wrong with the ship's teleporter. I think everyone has been teleported away randomly. They could be anywhere. Oh, no. I'm on the ship. It's damaged uh, badly, but it's still intact. Where are you, Captain? I'm on some sort of space station. It seems pretty modern. I feel like I want to talk like Captain Kirk for some reason. There seems to be some sort of interference in this dimension. Um, yeah, I'll bet. Oh, look at this. I'm broadcasting coordinates of the ship to you now. So this game is actually a Metroidvania-style game where there isn't a linear path to go through, and you're supposed to go through the world and explore and backtrack and things like that. I believe. I think you can get abilities of some kind, but I'm not entirely sure. You, there might be no abilities to get. Um, again, I've never played this before. I've only sort of read some limited things about it. So I can't teleport you back, but if you can find a teleporter anywhere nearby, you should be able to teleport back to me. All right, we'll do. Okay, so there's a teleporter. That's where we're trying to go. I don't know if there is another button to bring up the map. The game has been pretty good at telling me the buttons so far, but as far as I know, it's just sort of directional keys and spacebar are the only buttons. I'll keep trying to find the rest of the crew. All right, you keep at it. And uh, meanwhile, my, my captain, he's distressed by the fact that he's lost, but he doesn't seem to be phased at all by the fact that he can just sort of uh, reverse gravity. Oh, <laughs> man, these are totally like enemies from Commodore 64 or like ZX Spectrum games. I could see these being ZX Spectrum enemies like yes signs. What does that even mean? 
Oh my god. Okay, I think this game uh, shows us something really cool, which I said uh, for, you know, many, many years, which is that games, I think, um, people fall into this trap of thinking games have to have amazing graphics and, like, state-of-the-art sound and be, like, photorealistic, but I have long contended that a good game is a good game. Um, it is just basically something that's fun. Um, hold on a second. I probably don't really need it, but it might be able nice to take back to the ship to study. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that thing if I can. Oh my god. <laughs> Didn't really think through the logistics of what was gonna happen there. Okay, there we go. Um, these are like bouncing devil babies or something. Oh god, I died! Damn it! Oh, we were so close. Okay, we, we are gonna get this thing. Uh, but yeah, it's so easy to fall into the trap of thinking like, you know, oh, like it has to be photorealistic or no one's gonna play it and... It's like, no, like, it just has to be a good game. Boom, congratulations, you found a shiny trinket. Uh, one out of 20. Oh, and I died. Wait, do I, I still have the trinket. Oh, okay, so that's a fast way of, uh, of sort of moving on. Um, now, I think the reason that I, like, personally uh, really like indie games is because, surprise, surprise, I really like retro games, and I have long kind of felt like indie games... Like, like, nowadays, like, tri oh man, that was like a giant Goomba, giant evil, or like a Pac-Man ghost or something. Um, AAA games can be good. I'm not, I'm not sort of anti, damn it, I'm not anti AAA games, but, um, I would say, man, you have to have your wits about you in this. Oh, oh. <laughs> I thought we could change gravity and then change it again. Oh no. Okay, hold on. Huh? And then, okay, we just got to fall. So you can only change gravity when you're on the ground. I thought you could do it in midair and then get over the spikes, but I guess they're on to me. Man, thank God for the checkpoints, eh? But anyway, I'm not, I'm not anti, oh, damn it. I'm not anti uh, AAA games. I just kind of feel like some AAA games are good, but there's some that just feel like these like big bloated blockbusters that are like trying too hard. And like, if they honestly just sort of like sat back, chilled out a bit, and focus more on like good, you know, solid gameplay. Oh God, <laughs> dying so much here. And didn't, and weren't as concerned about graphics. They could actually make better games, you know? Um, so I think like for me personally, I enjoy, um, I enjoy indie games because I'm a retro gamer. I have always, oh, wait, wait, wait. what did that say? It said press down. Okay, I, I wasn't really uh, paying attention to the instructions there. Um, but yeah, I've always liked, always liked retro games, obviously. And uh, indie games kind of feel like where it's at for me, personally. Damn it. Um, all right. We're fighting ghosts and stuff now, too. Like, what's happening on this space station, you know? Hey, ho, ha. Huh. You just, th this is actually not that hard at all. A teleporter. You just sort of have to, like, have your wits about you. Um, I think what makes indie games more like the retro games that uh, I've loved for, for decades is that, uh, oh, game saved. Is that uh, basically back in the day when people were first starting to make video games, they didn't have access to unlimited resources. So like, yeah, you'd have this great idea for like all these things you want to do in the game, but practically there's only so much you can do, you know? Um, and so games had kind of limits. But nowadays, like AAA game studios are like basically like Hollywood movie studios. You know, they have like so much resources and stuff like that. They can kind of like just do whatever they want and it doesn't really, you know, matter. Like they'll just, you know, they, they can literally like technology is now like no longer a factor in like what they're worried about doing. And that that is good because there are, again, again, not not anti AAA games. There are some really good AAA games that have a lot of uh, cool possibilities. Um, but oh man, how how are you supposed to <laughs> damn it? <laughs> Uh, okay. I, I kind of don't know where I'm going, by the way. Is there a way to, like... Oh, Enter brings up the map. Okay. Um, wait, hold on. If I go back, I'm just going to get trapped. I must have to go forward. Okay, there's two options. Forward or, like, left or right in the pit down there. Oops. Uh, man, this game is unforgiving. This game is unforgiving. But anyway, like, uh, AAA games, they kind of, like, don't have any limits. Like, there's nothing they really have to, like... Uh, worry about but uh, indie games they don't have they don't have unlimited resources so developers often it's like one or two guys with an interesting idea and there's no committee no focus group nothing like that and they just got to figure out like how do we make a fun game that we want to play and as a result you get these games that don't have the best graphics um, but have like solid gameplay ideas 
And my god, we suck at this. Oh my god, this is so painful. Oh god. Um, hold on. Let's make sure I'm not missing anything here. Right, let's break all of these for fun. Oh, okay, but then we can't. Um, like, did, did we miss something here? I'm, I'm kind of confused. I feel like, okay, we went here. We saved. Oh, press enter to teleport. Boom. Okay, that's what I missed. I was wondering, like, how am I supposed to get to the next part? Got it. Captain! Level complete. Oh, we did it! Okay, I was at the end of the level and I walked away. You've rescued a, a crew member. Four remain. All right, we can do this. Let's see what the story is. So, Doctor, have you had any idea what caused the crash? There's some sort of bizarre signal here that's interfering with our equipment. It caused the ship to lose its quantum position, collapsing us into this dimension. Oh, no. But I think they should be able to fix the ship and get out of here, as long as we can find the rest of the crew. All right, let's do it. We really don't know anything about this place. Um, oh, that guy's just falling forever. Our friends could be anywhere. They could be lost or in danger. Uh, that doesn't sound good. They can tell. Can they teleport back here? Not unless you find a way to communicate with us. We can't pick up their signal, and they can't teleport here unless they know where their ship is. Well, let's go rescue them. We need to find them. Head into the dimen into the dimension and look anywhere they might have ended up. All right, just wander aimlessly into parallel worlds and see what we can find. Um, all right. Oh, and there's question marks to show us. These are points that show up on our scans as having high energy patterns. There's a good chance they're teleporters, which means they're probably built near something important. They could be a very good place to start looking. All right, will do. I'll head out and see what I can find. I'll be right here if you need any help. All right, off, off to more adventures, I suppose. Ooh. Uh, Victoria loves to study the interesting things I find and okay so we get to find uh, shiny things and then they get uh, brought back here and studied yeah so anyway all I was saying about indie games is like like honestly like I could have programmed this game like it's it's simple enough that like uh, you know almost anyone could program it oh actually I don't oh wait no I do want to go there right wait is that where I am right now hold on hold on <laughs> Uh, press left or right to choose a teleporter, then press enter to teleport. Boom. Okay. All right. And then this is like a dead end. So we're going to go back over here. Gotcha. Cool. So yeah, like the game is actually very simple. Um, but the best indie games almost have the simplest concepts. Oh my God. What the heck just happened there? <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can like fall on this block over here. There we go. Um, like Braid. Braid was a great indie game, and its concept was just like, you know, you, uh, you're, you just have the ability to mess with time, you know, like, I will mess with time, I will mess with time. And Braid was actually a, a tremendous game. Simple concept, um, but just like, you know, super interesting and fun. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, what other indie games have, like, great concepts like that. Um, Fez, I guess, was just like, you know, you're, uh, you're in a, uh, you're a 2D guy in a 3D world, which is actually super cool. <laughs> okay, I, I have no idea where I am, by the way, like, oh my god, look at this map, oh god, oh man. Alright, let's continue to explore then, I guess. Wait, where is the question mark around here? Um, okay, it's kind of like up there. Well, let's continue exploring this way. I, I, I just want to, like, explore this ship at this point. Okay, I'm going to go like this. And, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> so I'm guessing the checkpoints eventually are farther back from the action. So you actually kind of got to get better at, uh, you know, like, doing this, like, gravity switching stuff. Which uh, is going to be a challenge for me. So the challenge for you is watching me die. And the challenge for me is, is dying. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, that's like the most embarrassing pit to die in. I didn't even make it over the first little pit. All right, here we go. All right, and here we go. Here we go. Oh, damn. There's got to be something good here. They wouldn't put all these spikes here if there was nothing cool here. Um, but yeah, what, what are some other cool indie games? I can only think of like Braid and Fez at the moment that are sort of like cool indie games built around like one mechanic. I mean, like V V V V V V V here is also a cool game built around one mechanic. It's a, a very simple gravity switching mechanic. Okay, here we go. Got it. Got it. Yes. All right. What have we found? Oh, we found out one of these things. 
A shiny trinket. Two out of 20. Uh, you know what actually kind of sucks is I don't care about these trinkets. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to play this game long enough to collect them all, so... Um, oh my god. Now, now it's just like going to be a pain to get out of this, uh, this spiky dungeon. Although it is... It is getting me practiced for having to, like, uh, do this. Yeah! Okay, that worked. Oh my god, wait, we gotta get this checkpoint. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, can you imagine if we died here after all that work? Okay, thankfully. All right, let's check the map and see where we are. Okay, so here's a checkpoint. We'll go ahead and grab that. And, oh, there's a checkpoint there, too. Hmm, okay. Hmm, where have we not been? Oh, you know what? Let's try and go to that question mark. I feel like that'll be where some action is. So I go like this. Wait, actually, I think if we go back. Oh, shoot. <laughs> and then I fall for like a thought. Good thing there's no fall damage on this little guy. He's just like so happy, just like casually like flying through space. He doesn't care, man. Wait, it looked like I could get in down there, but I guess not. Maybe I can go in like this. Like this. Like this. Oh, I missed a checkpoint. Got it. Okay. Like this. I think I'm like slowly going away from. Like I wanted to go to the left. I'm like going farther away from it. All right. Let's let's just let's just see where this goes. Why not? Uh, we we seem to be like in a very free form part of the the level where like nothing can hurt me. Oh God. <laughs> okay. Take it back. Oh, we're way back here too now. We. All right, we made it back to the, the spike world. Oh, God. Okay, so we, the the trick for that one is to go a little bit more to the right than I'm going. Okay. Boom. Easy. Oh, Spike's right. <laughs> right to the butt. He's, like, landing hardcore on Spike's here. Good thing this little guy's invincible. Okay, we'll go to the right. Oh, my God. Okay, and we'll get a checkpoint. Um... Oh, what the heck? We went so far up that we ended up at the bottom of the screen. Okay. This game also, uh, by the way, reminds me of like Atari games, like really old school Atari games, like the sound effects and the graphics and stuff. Actually, what's funny is these graphics are probably too advanced for Atari. Like Atari, there's no way Atari could handle games this advanced. Now let's try going down here. Um, this game is a lot more like exploring a giant cave than I thought it would be. I thought there'd be like more distinct uh, rooms and stuff like that. But like, I don't know if we're just like, you know, between levels or something. Oh, we finally found a teleporter. Yes. All right. So we can teleport if we want. But I don't want to teleport. I want to find like another room. I want to find like the next, next set of like puzzle areas. Oh, this looks promising. Um, oh yeah, okay. I think ready, get ready to bounce. I, I'm down with it. All right, we found the next world, the next sector of the ship. It's oh my god, what what the heck just happened there? Oh, interesting. Okay, there's a line, and when you hit the line, you bounce. Got it. All right. Um, huh? Cool. So you, it is kind of like a jump. Interesting. So you can't actually jump in this game, but they sort of programmed in a pseudo jump. So this is, this totally reminds me of uh, Braid, how there's like one simple mechanic and every major level has like a different riff off of it that kind of like adds something totally new to the journey. Oh man, oh that's cool, interesting. Um, oh, there we go, boom, boom, yeah. Like remember how in Braid, every single, like if you haven't played Braid, you should check it out. But uh, in, in every level of Braid, there was like a, um, oh jeez. Okay, there was like a different, um, a different sort of riff off the time bending mechanic. So, okay, how do I want to do this? Um, okay, so I want to do that. And I want to do, oh, damn it. I wasn't fast enough. Okay, so I want to do that. Then that, oh yeah, we got it. We got it. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. We got it. We got the thing. Oh, man. All that work for that little thing. Young man, it's worth the challenge. Oh, my God. Okay. So, this is good. Nope. I want to be on the roof. Oh, damn it. Like that. Damn it. Okay. Like that. Like that. Ah, oh, damn it. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yes. All right. I don't know how that worked, but we got it. Um. Ah, oh, damn. This is hard. This is this is a lot harder than it looks. Wow. And it totally does mess with your brain. Okay. Uh. So we want to go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> wow. What a cool puzzle game. Um. Okay. So like that. Nope. There you go, like that, like that, that, like that, 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 ah, damn it. Okay, I'm going through this too fast. Hey oh, we did it! Alright. Now, oh god. This one's hard. Ah, oh, damn it, there's a spike there that's generating the, like, beam that I need. Ah, oh, there we go. Cool. Wow. This game is, like, really challenging. It totally feels like the old-school retro, like, difficulty of video games. Like, you die a lot. But the nice thing is syntax error. Um, the nice thing is that when you do die, you usually spawn, like, back right where you kind of left off. So it's kind of, like, forgiving in that sense. This is actually pretty fun, this part. Okay. Oh, damn. I'm getting, like, too antsy with this. And... Oh, God! Okay. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. Ah, oh, damn it! You got—you took like a spike to the side of the head. All right. Okay, take it easy. And boom, we got it. Okay, and then we go like. Okay, no. Then we go like this and this. And then he goes. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's awesome. We. Oh, this is so cool. This is so neat. Oh my god, I can't believe I made that. Okay, now there's two. Oh, you kind of have to, like, go in between. I gotcha. Oh, god! You took a spike right to the old... <laughs> right to the groin. Okay. Ah, oh, damn it. Right into the spike walls. I changed my mind. Look at the... Look at... Have you guys been paying attention to the names of every room that I'm in? They're, like, funny names. Free your mind. I changed my mind, Thelma. Then, in a single bound, indirect jump vector... It's interesting how they named even like these sub screens that are part of like the same general puzzle, but uh, you know, but are kind of like their own screens. All right, there we go. Oh God, almost went right into the spikes there. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Oh man, your timing on this has to be like pic pixel perfect, man. It doesn't actually have to be that perfect, but like my timing is clearly not uh, good enough. Okay, here we go. Yeah! Oh. Yeah, there we go. All right, we got that one. Uh, this one is the one that's giving me trouble. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, why did I... <laughs> Damn it! Okay, I should only try and cross that one on the way down because you have more time. Because uh, the way it works is as soon as you, like, hit the edge of the screen, the screen changes, but it's, like, it's there's not enough time to move. Um, I don't know if you guys, like, understand. Hold on, I'll show you. We get over there. Ah, oh, damn it. Um, if this game, you know what? If this game scrolled, if this game had smooth scrolling, it would actually, I think, be easier to play. Because the fact that, like, once you're at the edge of the screen, the whole screen changes, it's, it, you kind of have, like, a second of disorientation when the screen changes, because you're not quite sure where you are, or how fast you're going, and stuff like that. Okay, there we go. Like, right here. Like, if I try and go to the right, as soon as I'm at the bottom of the screen, uh, it's like it's too easy to either hit the walls or go too late. So I should do it at the top, like that. There we go. And now I want to do it when I'm at the bottom, so I have the most time on the screen. So I can, like, watch my placement. Okay! Oh, God. We got it. I think. Oh, my God, we got it! Woo! Alright. Um. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, but I want that. I want that teleporter. Oh! <laughs> Can we. There we go. Yeah! Game saved! Interesting. Ow! Okay, hold on. So before we go down, let's try going up and see what's over here. Um, oh, there's another monitor. This is like an interesting little puzzle room. Huh. Okay, let's see what this monitor says. Research notes. Access to the control center is still possible through the main, at through the main atmosphere filters. All right, good, good to know. Thanks. Very helpful. Let's see what's over here. Ooh, another one of these shiny things. Don't mind if I do. 
Actually, another kind of like indie game this reminds me of a little bit is uh, Pixel Junk Shooter, because it's all about exploring a space station, and that's what that game was about too. Although Pixel Junk Shooter was more of like a game studio game. This, like, this is clearly a game made by one person. You know, Braid was made by one person, Fez was made by, actually, I mean, there might be one or two people involved, but you know what I mean, like a really small team. Pixel Junk Shooter was made by a, a small studio. A small studio, so probably still fall in the indie game category, but not like, you know, not like one person. Um, as I say, I find games created by like a single person like almost more more retro than uh, than than not. Okay, here we go. This is, this is gonna be a hard one right here. Um, okay. You know what's funny is like I start trying to say something and then I get distracted by the game and it's like, oh my god. Wait, are we doing this all for like a little glowy gem? All right. Well, that gem better be better be uh, better be happy. That, that was like that was that was fun, but like a very difficult, mind-bending little jump thing that we had to do. Oh god! The worst part is, is like now it's gonna be harder to like get out of this thing than it was to get. In. Oh, there we go, we did it! All right, look at these feeble spikes. Those spikes can never get us. We're safe in our bouncy beams. That's right, spikes. Boom! Easy. I've been through much harder. Oh, what the heck? A cube killed me. Or not a cube, a square. Okay, interesting. Huh. Okay, I'm like perfectly synced up with this one, so I don't know what to do. Hey oh <laughs> Interesting. So you kinda get in sync with it and then you get out of sync and you have to wait till you're out of sync and like make your move. Alright, cool. Alright. Doing good. Oh god! Okay, hold on. Where are we? What the heck? We're at the top now. Oh, we're we're working our way towards one more one last question mark. Oh my god. Th this is gonna be challenging, this part here. <laughs> oh, can't believe I did that. <laughs> you know what's funny is this is like a hard game, but it like it makes you feel good about like the achievements. Um, and and again, you know, not to like continue to harp on retro games, but it's like I think that's the thing that you know um, that that's the thing about retro games. They were super hard, but they were like so satisfying. Um, oh damn it. Um, I think modern games like Dark Souls and Demon Souls sort of capture that old retro uh, feel. Where like retro games were like semi abusive. <laughs> it was like being in an abusive relationship. Like the game was so damn hard. But it's like if you could get good at it, it made you really feel good. You know, so. Uh, like this part is like super difficult. Okay, here we go. Ah, oh, damn it! I walked right into the spike walls. Alright. We got it. Oh, he just landed on a big old spike, went right up his butt. Okay, here we go. Damn. I almost feel like I need a D-pad for this. I think if I had a D-pad, I would be playing this game a little better. I'm playing on a, a keyboard because this is like an old Commodore 64 game, and like these games you played on keyboards, man. Like, you didn't have anything else. I would be really interested, you know what, to see if this game could be ported to the Commodore 64. I bet it totally could. Which is kind of funny then, because it suggests that here's a game that we created in modern times, and people play in modern times, and is a success, but there's absolutely no reason this game couldn't have existed in, like, 1988. It's just no one had thought of it. That's what I find super interesting, too, about some indie games, where, like, there's actually nothing about them technologically that means they couldn't have existed, like, 20 years ago. They just happened to not exist 20 years ago, you know? Like, just no one had really thought of doing them. So I, I almost guarantee this could have been programmed in the Commodore 64, which would have actually been crazy. Like you could travel back in time and give this to someone and be like, this game is coming out next year, you know, in like the 80s. And they'd be like, oh, sweet. But then it's like jokes on them. It's not coming out for like, you know, another 20 years or whatever. All right, we have finally made it past that brutal point there. Oh, no. Oh, I just, I, I, I move in anticipation. It's like if you move too late, you land on it. You move too early, you slam into some spiky walls. It's like a little bit of mercy, please, for the love of God. All right, here we go. Ah, oh, damn. And then after you move past it, like you don't want to overshoot it because then you'll just go into more spikes. Like, oh my God. Okay, we got it. And, oh, we got it. Thank God. I was like so cognizant there of like trying to make sure that I uh oh my god I uh, didn't uh I didn't overshoot it oh my god this is gonna be challenging jeez 
Okay. Oh my god. I would like to see a speed run where somebody just flies through this and like puts me to shame. Oh, are you kidding me? The tail of my butt caught on uh, caught on a spike. Shoot. Can I land on these things? I wonder. Hold on. Okay. No. It's like too narrow a platform. Even if I could, I'd just die. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, we did it. We did it somehow. That was just random chance, by the way. There was no plan there. That was pure chance. Oh, my God. Okay. So, um, what do I want to do here? Oh my god, this is this is warping my brain. Shoot. Shoot. Oh, okay, so you kinda have to like hit that third one and then go back. Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. This is crazy! Things things went to eleven, man. Oh god. Okay. I think I see what you're supposed to do here. Do this and this. Ah, oh, damn it, like you just have to, like, not make an error, though. Oh! Ah! Oh, I was off the screen! I was onto the next screen. And I died! Ah! Oh. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Yeah! Oh. Every time. Okay, hold on. This actually is not as hard as it looks, but... It's just, like, stabilizing yourself and not overshooting it at the end. Oh, we did it! We did it! Okay, where's my where's my checkpoint, man? Give me a checkpoint. Have a heart. Hey, we rescued someone. Oh no, Captain, are you stuck here too? It's okay. I'm here to rescue you. Let me explain everything. And then we we swipe into the future. What? I didn't understand any of that. Oh well, don't worry. Follow me. Everything will be all right. And there's a teleporter literally right here. You could have saved yourself at any point, but that's okay. The Philadelphia experiment. Wasn't that like a conspiracy theory thing where like uh, people believe that uh, the government made, uh, the US government made like a stealth boat or something like that? Philadelphia experience, like cloaking technology? I could be way off on that. My, uh, my uh, conspiracy theory history is a little fuzzy, to say the least. Wow, we actually beat a world. I'm, I'm semi impressed, I guess? Happy? Uh, excited that that happened? Pretty cool. So uh, let's see what Violet has to say. Welcome back, Captain. Uh, I think Victoria is quite happy to be back on the ship. She really does like adventuring. She gets. She doesn't like adventuring. She gets very homesick. What's she doing on an exploratory vessel? Also, you know, to begin with. Also, I cannot tell the males from the females in this game. They literally are identical. Physically, they're identical. Okay. So let's try. Let's find one more world. I think. I feel like that that should be our mission. Find one more world, one more mind-bending mechanic to play with. So we haven't gone this way. So we're gonna try going this way. See what we find. Um, sure. We'll try going like this, like this. Oh, look, there's a teleporter. That did not take long, whoops. Actually, let's go ahead and uh, research notes. Our first breakthrough was the creation of the inversion plane, which creates a mere dimension beyond a given event horizon. Oops, skip that. I hate when you accidentally skip dialogue and there's no way to replay it. I like games that have like journals that will allow you to go back and like see dialogue that you've skipped. Um, okay, so wait, we are here. You know what's interesting is there's kind of like nothing around us. Hmm. All right, well, whatever. Let's, let's see what we can find. Okay, so we're... He okay, wait, I, I don't care about the research notes. Oh, <laughs> I skipped the dialogue again. Uh, hold on, let, let's just see what... Oh, we can't even get to it. Okay, well, whatever. I was gonna say, let's just see what he says, but forget it. It's not that important. Okay, we haven't ever been straight up here. So there we go, we map that out. I feel like I just wanna like map out all the environments around here just cause it's down here. This looks promising. It is absolutely nothing. Okay. Um, so wh where would be a place we haven't been yet? I guess we want to go... So we can either go towards the purple place and go left, because we haven't explored any of that. Like right below kind of the purple um, rectangular buildings. We haven't gone left. Or we can kind of go up and to the right. 
Uh, I feel like... Hmm. Let's quickly go to the left and just see what it looks like. We can always... We can always... Um, where are we? We can always um, go up and to the left afterwards. So let's just see if there's anything interesting around here real quick. So yeah, now we're exploring to the left of the, the starting point. Get a checkpoint here. Um, oh, that looks, that looks semi-promising. See what's over here. Nothing, nothing, whole lot of nothing. Whole lot of nothing. Whole lot, of, where are we now? Oh man, we're like in the far corner of the, the map. Man, this game like bends space and time in interesting ways. Oh, you know what? This looks like a place. Oh, it's a teleporter at least. Okay, what's this say? Despite our best efforts, the dimensional destabilizer won't hold out forever. Its collapse is inevitable. Huh? These coordinates aren't even in this dimension? Whoa, weird. Um, okay. I feel like, like, there's only so much map to explore. Like, how, it feels like there's only, like, one more world or maybe two at most that, like, we haven't found. Like, how, how short is this game, I wonder? Um, oh, God. <laughs> okay, that was just, that was just sloppy. We, we've gotten through hard, oh, my God. We've gotten through harder parts than this, like, in our sleep. We just came from like a brutal dimension. Okay, boom, boom. I think it's because your guy slides around a little bit. Um, the final step in creating the dimensional destabilizer was to create a feedback loop. Um, oh, okay, Oh, th so there's a green world up there. So that's good to know. In case we want to go to the green world. Uh, we're right near this yellow world though, which intrigues me. Um, look, like we're technically in the yellow world. What truth? Did you see that? Oh, okay, so now this is the world of conveyor belts. All right, cool. So here's another mechanic, the conveyor belt. Oh my God, mechanic, kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, that's neat. So yeah, I guess as I as I suspected after that first level, uh, truth. <laughs> so truth will kill us, eh? Um. Okay, there's no way to get that. We have to come at it from the other way. Um, oh my god! Okay, so that doesn't work that way. So you kind of have to, like, time it. Boom! Like that. Oh, jeez. Actually, this looks hard. <laughs> oh god. Yeah! Oh god! Okay, are we skilled enough to do this? Oh my god. Oh, I can't believe that worked. Oh no! Oh no, it was a conveyor belt in the reverse, di reverse direction. And I uh, got it. Okay, we got it. Jeez. So yeah, this is just like Braid, how like every world basically has its own um, its own sort of interesting mechanic. There's like ghosts and skeletons down here. Did you guys see this? You guys see this? Okay, here we go. Skeleton land. Okay. Oh God, easy. Easy go! And we did it. We passed the evil skeletons. Damn it. Okay, th this actually looks super hard. Huh? <laughs> what the heck are we supposed to do here? Maybe we can just like skip this whole thing. No, that doesn't work. Um. Hmm. Okay, forget about this. Let's get out of. Oh, yeah, I forgot about these guys. <sighs> oh my god! Uh, these guys are going to be harder to pass on the way back. Hyperspace Bypass 5. Interesting. Okay. Go! And... Go! And... Go! Ah! Oh, I can't believe we got by them. Those guys are brutal. Okay, we should have we just stayed up here the whole time. All right, look at them like bouncing around, bopping all happy and stuff. There we go. That's what we wanted to do right from the get go. And then, sure, that works. Yeah, oh, God. Oh, <laughs> and the conveyor belt level is harder than it looks. Um, so, I, I have a sneaking suspicion. That I, I don't know if I have it in me to beat another one of these levels, to be totally honest. Here, you know what I'm gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna try and exit the conveyor belt level, and I just wanna like find one more level just to like see what the main mechanic is all about. That's all I wanna know at this point. Just wanna like 
see what the mechanic is about. Oh, son of a bitch. All right, we are slowly working our way out of this evil dimension. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, there we go, we got it. Oh, shoot. Truth is gonna get us. Ugh. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Ah, oh, fuck. Damn. <laughs> oh man, it's so much harder than it looks. It's crazy. Okay, I made it back to the entrance and I cannot get it past this point. Yeah, we're screwed. We're totally screwed. Oh my God, it doesn't want to let us out. It doesn't want to let us <laughs> out. Oh my God. Okay, here, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna try quitting to the menu. Cause it should, in theory, take us back to the, uh, Back to like where we saved last. Yeah, here's where we saved last. All right, so we discovered that place, the evil, evil conveyor belt place. Let's see if we can find one more place uh, while I kind of like wrap my thoughts up here this game. So, uh, V, 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 V. Very interesting, very interesting idea for a game, I think. Uh, let's teleport somewhere, actually. Let's go here. Why not? Um, it totally reminds me of a retro game, as I've said a number of times today. And I think that is like a huge plus. Um, I'm a big fan of these like indie games that are done in the style of like old school retro games. I just like love the concept, you know, and they're designed in the same way, you know, like retro games were designed by a couple of people back in the day when a computer game was programmed by just like two or three people. And um, these these like modern indie games that are pretending to be retro games are programmed in the same way. They're just like a couple of people who had a vision, decided to make a game, and they made something that looks like one or two people made it, but that doesn't necessarily make it a bad game. You know, like I've often said, gameplay is king. If a game has good gameplay, it is good, and it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter. Oh, interesting. Oh, here's another interesting mechanic. A world that scrolls. Ooh, actually, I like this one better than the uh, than the other one. Oh, damn it, we died. It scrolls you back. Cool. Okay. Oh my god, there's spikes. Ah, oh, damn. Oh, actually, I don't know if I like this better than the other one. I think I'm gonna die an awful lot here. Oh my god. Yeah, go, 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 go. Oh, and, and you go off to the side of the screen. You come back on the other side. Cool. All right. Ah, oh, damn, we fell into the spikes that time. Um, okay. All right, checkpoint. I don't even know how to get that shiny thing on this level. Neat. Man, so inventive. This is the thing, they took a simple mechanic, like flipping gravity, and look at all the stuff they've done with it. It's like, so imaginative. Ah, oh, we're dead again. Um, it's brutal. It is. This game is brutally difficult, um, but it has that old school sort of difficulty to it, where like, you know, you get, you'll get really good at it given enough time, but be, be prepared to swear and throw your controller around a little bit. That's how these old retro games were. They designed NES controllers to be hardy pieces of equipment because they knew what was going to happen. People were going to be chucking their controllers and shouting explicatives. And that's indeed what did happen back in the days when we played NES. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, so I'm a fan of this game. I think it's a really neat idea. It also kind of reminds me of like Super Meat Boy, I guess. I guess that's another indie game produced by just one or two people off like a very simple mechanic. The idea was just dying a lot. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, so there's an arrow telling me where I have to go. Huh! Yeah! Okay, I'm going way too early. Yeah! There we go. Cool. Um, yeah, so this is a, one of the games in the book, A Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. I think as far as, you know, the must play goes, I mean, definitely this game is going to frustrate the hell out of some people. So I think there's certainly a lot of people for whom this game is not meant for. But at the same time, like, um, it's a modern game, but it's kind of like a retro game. It's what we call an indie game. And I think it exemplifies all the good things I like about modern indie games, how like they can feel retro and it can like give some novel you know like give you a new old game to play and i really like that i hope indie games never go away i hope they continue you know there's many kinds of indie games but i hope this kind of indie indie game continues to exist for a long time because i i quite enjoy it so 
Anyway, those are my thoughts. What do you guys think of here? Is it a game that you yourself have played? Is it a game that looks like it would frustrate the hell out of you? Or is it a game that looks like you would absolutely love it? Maybe just on its nostalgic appeal and nothing else. Whatever the, the case may be, feel free to leave your comments uh, down below. I enjoy hearing your guys' opinions on these things in addition to my own. And uh, whatever you think of the game, hopefully I have made today entertaining for you. Hopefully it hasn't been too painful watching me die repeatedly over and over at the same spot. I mean, I would edit all of the, the repeated deaths out, but at the same time, you know, like this is, this is what old retro games were about. Screwing up and dying repeatedly at the same, at the same point in, in the game. I mean, it's just how they went. So I gotta leave a little bit of that in to give you the, the real, the real old school feel of, of playing this game for the first time. Oh God, that was a terrible decision. Anyway, until we meet again, my friends, um, you all take care of yourselves. Be sure to come back soon because we'll be playing another game from the book, A Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. So until then, my friends, you all take care of yourselves and uh, peace. Oh my god, we actually did it! We saved another dude! I was like right at the end when I signed off there. Guys, I'm better at this game than I think. Although that conveyor belt level could be the end of me. I This level was actually not hard at all. The first level we were like bouncing, that was like really hard. Conveyor belt seemed about as hard. I just think, I don't know if I would have like the patience to go through like another level that challenging. But this upside down scrolling level, this one was awesome, man. Totally awesome. If you, if you don't have this game, it's only like two or five bucks on Steam and GOG. Check it out. It's worth it.